like we're clinging we're clinging to these things that they might be gifts they might be blessings but we're clinging unto them rather than saying I don't have to be attached to this even though I got this blessing and it's amazing and I'm thankful I don't I don't actually need it all I really 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 need is to love God and to receive God's love and then to love all of God's children hi friends welcome back to my channel today I'm going to record a part one and then a part two of something I've been trying out lately I have been involved in an Ignatian retreat overall it's 10 weeks long we get some material that we're meant to read ourselves throughout the week and then spend about an hour a day in prayer in reflection journaling just trying to pay attention to the things that come up I'll put a link down below to tell you a little bit more about who Ignatius was a little bit about his life and what led him to these spiritual practices but the reason I'm sharing this with you today is because I want to introduce and share with you some of the spiritual practices and exercises that I've been discovering and, and trying out myself and see if they also open up good things for you and blessings in your life. So in part one, I will walk you through an exercise that I have crafted from the material over the last couple of weeks. Someday I would hope, if you if you like this kind of content, to do a more expansive look at the Ignatian practices. For now, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a taste, and then in part two, I will give you some of my reflections, my revelations, and, and just where I've been challenged, and to where those challenges have led me further in my walk with Christ. So I hope that these bless you and encourage you and get you more intimately acquainted with our God in heaven. Just beginning with Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord God, who will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord God, who will give you the desires of your heart. So, he, upon hearing that, the first question that comes to mind is, well, what do I really want? What if what I want isn't the right or the best thing for me? If this scripture, this promise is true, if I delight myself in the Lord, then God will give me the desires of my heart. What if those desires aren't good things? So this Ignatian journey has helped me kind of focus for me what I want to desire, what I seek to desire, what I hope to desire in God. And then it would follow <laughs> that God wants to give me those things. So the main question is, what do I really want? So you could be asking yourselves, what what do I really want? We start out with an acknowledgement that there is a grace that we are seeking. The first grace is to listen more attentively to Christ's call on my life, to become more ready and eager to do what Christ would have me do. So the grace is to learn to listen more attentively to Christ's call on my life so that I can become more ready and eager and open to what Christ wants me to do. So Ignatius has this idea that there are motivations that help propel us to do our best. And he called these things the magis, M-A-G-I-S. And the magis for Ignatius are the greater, the excellent, and the best kinds of things or hopes or dreams or motivations. So what are the greatest, the most excellent, or the best hopes, dreams, or desires that will help me to seek the Lord that then the Lord will turn and grant to me? The entire life of somebody who's following Jesus wholeheartedly is really an expansive exercise in holy desire, kind of honing in on what is my desire, what is my place in this life, what does God want me to do? 
the cool thing is that the desires that we're training ourselves to seek through this Ignatian practice is that rather than being imposed onto or into us, what we really want to realize and hold on to is the fact that God's desire for us is actually already found in our deepest and truest desires. So we already have those desires built in. We come kind of pre-programmed and what can happen over time is we kind of lose sight of those things. But being human means that we want to know our maker and we want to align ourselves with our maker because our maker <laughs> knows what is the best, the greatest, the most excellent for us. And so that's what we're seeking when we're trying to figure out what's our motivation, what's the magis of my life. So the question again is, what do you long for truly deep down? In Luke chapter 11, verse 23, Jesus says, Whoever is not with me is against me. Whoever is not with me is against me. So one major way to discern whether or not we are personally standing with Jesus is when we join ourselves to and actually own the conviction that everything that we have and everything that we are is God's gift. So however much or how little we have, we gratefully say with our entire being, mind, and spirit, look at all that God has given me. Look at everything that God has given me. Look at these gifts. And then rather than seeking self-satisfaction or the approval of others, we simply turn and begin wondering and asking, how can I help? How can I help others? How can I serve others? How can I be love in the world? How can I love God who has given me all these things? Through a life of love and service, of compassion, understanding, and mercy, we begin to heal others just as we ourselves are healed and filled up with love. So it's a beautiful and reciprocal process that happens. As we feel the love, we receive it, we resonate with it, we reflect on it. In turn, we want to love more. We want our love to increase. And then we want to share that, not only with God, but with all of God's creation. Ignatius says, you will know the difference between the way of receiving that love and giving it back versus the hustle to gain and amass as much wealth or success or knowledge or abilities or stuff or status, whatever it is for your own gain. You'll be able to tell the difference if you're doing that, all those, if you're doing those things to try to satisfy yourself or because you're living from a place of fear or that you're worried that you're not going to be good enough or you're not going to have enough. Tomorrow you might run out or tomorrow you, you might be abandoned and forgotten. You'll know that if your motivation is like that or you'll know if your motivation to recognize and own your gifts and name them is to be grateful, to love, and to serve. You'll be, able, you'll be able to tell and discern the difference between those two. So in this exercise, we're being asked to honestly look into ourselves and ask whether we have been enticed or seduced by the enemies deceiving and collusion with the world other than Christ. Ignatius suggests that there are three types of people, that there are three different types of persons. And there may always be a tension between the idealism of Christ's call to love and to serve peaceably, wholeheartedly, and abundantly, with a lack of the interior freedom to follow Christ, 
and to accept his invitation. All that really means is we all struggle. We all struggle with this. We all feel and sense and wrestle with that tension between wanting to follow Christ and being attached to things that are really ultimately holding us back from experiencing love more deeply and fully. That's just part of our human condition. The attachment is the thing or the attachments are the things that prevent one to be free in Christ and to follow Christ freely. So it's just these things that hold us back, these things that we're not willing to let go of. So where are you, depending on the example, the arena, or the specific action or attitude that you're going to examine, you might identify with each of these types, depending on what's in question. So the first person is the one who procrastinates. This person wants to let go of the attachment but never gets around to it. Even on their deathbed, this person is still stuck thinking about letting go of their attachment. The second type of person is the one who compromises or negotiates. This person sincerely desires to be free of that excessive preoccupation. The thing holding them back at the same time they also want to keep it. At the same time, they also want to keep it. So this person strives to live a holy and a giving life outside or aside from that thing or those things that they're not willing to let go of. Except the problem is that they fail to do the one thing that they really must do. And that is to let go of that disordered attachment. So this person is really trying to negotiate with God. Rather than conforming their will to God's will, the compromiser looks for another way beyond God. So ultimately, they are not walking with God or even following Christ. It's kind of the question. You want to, but you're just having a hard time letting go. So you try to do other things, hoping that the grace will increase, but you never really come to the point of letting go and trusting God. And then the third type is the one who is truly free. This person, the truly free person, desires to get rid of their attachments in the world and keep only the attachment to and with God. However, they are able to let go of the disordered attachment in such a way that there remains no inclination either to keep wealth or to dispose of it. Because this person desires to keep or reject their wealth, belongings, their status, their success, whatever it is, solely according to what God, our Lord, will move this person's will to choose. And also then, according to what the person, him or herself, will judge to be the better for the service in the praise of the Divine Majesty. So this person will be moved to discern what is the majest, what is the greater, what is the better outcome regarding their wealth or their abilities or their status or their success in such a way that it will bring more praise, more glory, more honor to God and it will bring about more good in the world. This person seeks and chooses the majest, the better, the greater, the more excellent, the best part. The decision to give up the money or the talent is never pressured to be the majest. The decision, however, is made from the inner attitude of freedom, a place of being free, truly free. So Ignatius says to consider the choices, the big and the small things, the seemingly inconsequential or the largely impactful choices in our lives that we're currently facing, that we have had to face in the past, that we may face in the future. And he asks, 
How have you resembled each of the three persons? The procrastinator, the compromiser, the negotiator, or the truly free person? And I would say along with Ignatius that God's ultimate desire is for us to be free. Note that the third kind of person begins from a place of uncertainty. They're not sure whether or not God is asking them to give up the possession. She or he simply desires to be free and to do what God wants her or him to do. Such a person begins by asking God what God wants him or her to do. She or he is open to how God directs him or her through prayer, experience, reasoning and discernment, consolations and desolations, and the wise counsel of others. So this person begins from a place of being open with a steady focus or their eyes fixed on wanting to let go of the attachment and then to do what is the better part. The truly free person is also aware that their motivations may often be mixed, but they strive to choose from a desire to do better, to serve God and others. The third type of person may still feel or sense some attachment to the possession or the thing or the status or the ability, and thus they don't mind waiting for the magis, waiting to know what is the better part, the best thing to do. But the key is that she or he does not procrastinate and they don't negotiate. They make a timely decision acknowledging that we rarely reach complete indifference. But this person is truly free. So do you desire this? Proverbs 3, 6. In all your ways, seek and know the Lord God, and God will direct your path. This sounds a lot like the scripture we began with. Delight yourself in the Lord God, who will give you the desires of your heart. And so we pray. Eternal Lord of all creation, I sense your gaze on me, that you are near and watching over me, and that with you are all the great beings of your heavenly realm. Lord Jesus, I believe you have put a desire in me. If you will help me, please, I would like to make my offering. I want it to be my desire and my choice, provided that you want this for me as well, to live my life as you lived yours. I know that you lived a lowly status in a little town, that you rarely tasted luxury and never privilege, and that you resolutely refused to accept power. I know that you suffered rejection by many, by most, abandonment by friends and family members, and endured great pain and humiliation. I know, even though I can never know what that was like, I can hardly bear the thought of it all. But it seems an amazing and wonderful thing that you might call me to follow you and stand with you. I will labor with you to bring forth God's reign so long as you give me the gift and the grace to do it. In your precious name, amen. So in kind of reflecting on and trying to sift through all the things that have come up for me in trying to figure out what am I attached to and am I desiring God? Am I a free person? Am I negotiating or compromising? Am I procrastinating? My spiritual director suggested that when I pray, I ask that the desires that are from and in alignment with God, that I ask for those things to increase. And then for any and all of the desires or the hopes or the wants or the fears that are not from God or in alignment with God to decrease. So I think like through this 
exercise, I've also learned again that we don't have to be afraid. Fear is really not the good spirit. The thing to do is to get ourselves into the place where we can more fully and more openly trust and just to wait patiently yet expectantly for God to reveal everything because God acts in perfect timing all the time <laughs> and that God will give us the desires of our hearts when we are fully and sincerely seeking God. So I don't really have like an outline for you to pray, but just think about the three types of persons. Ask yourself, what are those things that are that, that you're attached to that you're too scared to let go of or you don't want to? And, and kind of like why, what's underneath there? And what it might look like if you really were truly a free person, a free person to love God more fully, to be even more thankful, more grateful, and then to take those blessings, those things that God freely gives us and bestows on us, and to actually share and bring those to other people. And as the people around you share their blessings with you, you will be able to recognize when you're with free people, when you're with people who, who are also free. And I would pray that that helps to spur you on to, we really need each other. So be joyful <laughs> and extend and share that joy and that peace with others in love and thanksgiving always. And I will share my testimony with you in part two. Please, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And when you subscribe, click the notification bell so that you will know whenever I post new content. Thank you so much for watching and being with me.